I've got a digital logic puzzle here for you. And if you're not familiar with digital logic, there's two things I need to explain. One is that digital logic deals with Boolean variables. They can have a state of one or zero. And the second is I need to explain this component, the not gate. The not gate has two possible states. One, you could have a zero on the input, and that would make the one an output, or you could have the one on an input, and the output would be a zero. It's always the opposite, right? The input is the opposite of the output. And so my question is, what if we try and break this rule, or maybe break it, by hooking the output into the input? Right? Will it settle at a zero or one? Or will it oscillate back and forth between zero and one? Or will it end in some third state, something in between? Well, I'm gonna test it out two different ways. One is using an Arduino because it's cheap and it's something you can do at home. And two, I'm gonna use a higher end oscilloscope just to see what it looks like when we really, really zoom in. And so let me show you the circuit. So you can see I've already got my Arduino scope set up down here in the corner, um, but here's my circuit. And I believe it's a CN4049 um, inverter, and that part number will actually become important for a later discussion. Um, and I've got my Arduino here taking the measurement. And you can see this green wire is actually where the output is bridged to the input. Um, and this red wire is coming off to my oscilloscope, which we'll see in a second. I'm using analog zero on my Arduino to take a measurement. Currently it's hooked to ground, because um, I didn't want to spoil it right away. Um, but my scope, you can actually see, um, is going to be measuring in millivolts. And so let's hook this up. This has been powered on for a little bit, and so it's kind of at a stable state already. And where are we at? Well, it actually looks like we're ending up at about 2.5 volts, or 2,500 millivolts. And so that means that we are, we are at our halfway point, right? We're halfway between zero and five volts. So to understand why that's happening, we actually need to look at the schematic for what's inside this chip. So let me head over to our screen. Well, actually, we'll talk about this Arduino code in a second, but let's look at the CMOS inverter. And that's a big thing. This is CMOS, which stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. So here's what an individual NOT gate looks like. And there's um, these diodes in here, which are kind of voltage protection and suppression. But then we also have right, the main components here, which is a P-channel NMOS, or excuse me, a P-channel um, transistor and a N-channel MOSFET, right? So they're both MOSFETs. And this is what forms the basis of a NOT gate. And um, so what's happening, right, is anytime we get close to a one on the input, then the output starts biasing toward a zero. And then we get a zero toward the input, and that starts biasing toward a one. And what happens is these transistors kind of get caught in a middle state where anytime they budge, the other one will cancel the other one out, and that's why we end up in this middle state. And so the question um, becomes, can we see that oscillation? Can we see that bounce back and forth? Or how quickly does it happen? And note that these diodes um, do work to dampen um, that oscillation a little bit. And so let's see what we can see if we go over to our oscilloscope. So we can see right now our steady state. And this also does confirm that our little Arduino um, scope is working well because we're at 2.5 volts right now. And so here's what I'm going to do. I want to see what it looks like when it turns on, so I'm going to use single capture mode. So I'm going to push my single button, and I've got my trigger somewhere in the range that I'm expecting it to loop through. And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove my power from my circuit, and I'm going to apply the power again. And actually, surprisingly, right, when we zoom in here, that transition from 0 to 2.5 volts it's mostly clean. There's some little divots in there, um, and I've, I've actually ran this a few times, 
and it's almost always clean and I actually think these um, little dips are just due to me plugging in the power. Um, so the fact is that we actually don't see that oscillation. It settles right at its middle rather quickly. Um, so this is the CMOS device, but there's also different specifications of devices. Um, so let me show you another type of device here, right? Oops, let's, uh, let's zoom out this way. So, uh, so this is our CMOS. Let's look at our TTL device. So our TTL device is right here. Um, and this is a uh, 74 series SO4, I believe. Um, and we'll see the part number later. I can't exactly remember right now. Um, but let's run the same exact experiment. Let's connect our signal here and our ground there. And now let's go over to our oscilloscope. Our oscilloscope here. And let's just run it right now. And check that out. Well, let's... So that's interesting. Uh, the stable state does have a small oscillation in here, right? We do see that oscillation. But you can also see that it's settling um, much closer to um, the zero side. Let's actually add a measurement here. Let's add the minimum just so we can see. Right, the minimum is about 1.4 volts. Oops, that was the amplitude, not the minimum. There we go, here's our minimum. So yeah, it's really zero. We're not going to see a negative voltage. Um, so that, that minimum is actually noise. But So we're actually, uh, a very small voltage is where we're at. Um, but it is oscillating. And this is a TTL chip, meaning that it's using BJTs. Um, and, but I am curious to see what happens when we turn it on. So let's, let's do a single capture. And oops, we already triggered our single capture. Let's uh, set our trigger much, much lower. I'm going to remove my power. And let's apply power. And we didn't capture it. Let's move our trigger even smaller. So let's apply power. So we're actually not getting anything there. I might have my trigger a little bit too low. Let's, uh, let's try it again. We can certainly tell that we're not going to a high voltage when we, um, when we, oh, interesting. Yeah, so we're actually not getting much of a change. I'd have to actually zoom in to, to capture that. But um, it looks like the moment I'm powering it on, it's actually staying quite low. So let's look at the circuit for this device. So I'm going to move us over. So um, here's the TTL knot. You can see that the device has, I would say, a slightly more complex circuit, right? So these are using BJTs and resistors, and there's one diode in here. Um, and so one thing to note is that TTL does deal with slightly different levels for how it defines a zero and how it defines a one. And so I think that's what we're actually capturing here. Um, so yeah, and I also said I was going to show you how I took my measurement with the Arduino. So let me show you that real quick. Um, I actually just go to File, Examples, and then Basics, Analog Read Serial, and I just modified it a small bit. All I did was change this data type to a float, and I applied this scaling here to see my value in um, millivolts. So, what do we learn? Well, this is our answer, right? The signal that comes in here, well, it depends on what type of device, but it's somewhere in between. It's not going to be 0 and 1. It appears for the TTL that we do have some small oscillation, but it is biased more towards zero. And in CMOS, right, we're actually right at one half, which is pretty neat. We didn't really have any oscillation there at all. So hopefully you found this informative.